thank you very much for coming to my exhibition and my artist talk. My name is Kyungun Oh, a Korean-born artist based in Los Angeles. I, I want to express my sincere gratitude for you know, the listening to my artist talk. Um, before delving into this exhibition, I want to introduce one of my stone sculpture series, Core. Core in geology is a cylindrical sample of Earth extracted from the ground by means of a coral, so that the strata are on this turf in the sample. While carving these 12 limestone cores, this geological term made me realize that I have carved not only a physical medium, but also the result of a wrong, period of time, hidden in strata. The, the, the strata connotates the notion of time. So when I think of this immense extent of time encapsulated in this core, the span of 74 years that I want to explore through this exhibition seems very short, like a tiny dot. But despite the, the fleeting nature of human existence, in this tiny dot, I want to focus on this seemingly insignificant tiny dot to, with, with the, the, the attitude of contemplation toward the immense expense of time. So time is a very important factor in my art practice. And I want to talk about 74 years here about my father's experience. My father is 90 years old and has been waiting to visit his hometown and meet his family members that might be alive in North Korea since the Korean War in 1950. At 16 years old, he had been separated from his entire family as a victim of 38th parallel the demarcation line between the North and the South. When I came to the U.S. to study art 26 years ago, my father hated my living Korea and said, living apart from the family is enough for me, but I had to leave. Anyway, I had to leave. So since leaving Korea in 1998, I had never cried for you know, the missing my homeland, my family, because I had to live here. I had to adjust to, to the new, I mean, new culture. You know, I had to survive. It was the survival mode, so I don't have that luxury to cry. But a year ago, I visited South Korea to meet my parents. And during the flight to South Korea, I encountered, I emotionally encountered with a chorus by Pensiero, also known as Chorus of the Hebrew Slaves, made by, made in 1842 by Giuseppe Verdi. It recollects the, the period of Babylonian captivity after the destruction of Solomon's Temple in 586 BCE. And while I didn't know the title and the subject of the opera, yes, I'm not familiar with classical music, <laughs> but the, the listening to the opera made me cry over an hour in the drive. So, so I researched, what is this song about? Then I found out the title and the subject. But you know, the, through the research, I discovered some controversial opinions about the suggesting that this opera was intended to be an anthem for Italian patriots. However, I was determined to approach it with my own personal perspective. The Asbury seems transcend the time and space. And during the flight, I was so 
emotional. I became so emotional to the light down something on my iPad. So I want to read that writing. I, I wrote that writing in Korean, so I have to read in Korean first and then translate in English. This is an intense longing for homeland. I feel like I have spent 25 years in the U.S. to understand the boy my father and those who have lost their home. This is melancholia. So this exhibition, Chorus of the Displaced, inspired by the title of Chorus of the Hebrew Slaves. This exhibition, Chorus of the Displaced, is an exploration of my father's, I mean the exploration of Korean words after mess of my father, and it's in resonance with my own diasporic journey as a first generation immigrant artist. And also, this exhibition serves as a personal map that navigates the, the complex and open, uncharted terrain of the displacement. And it also serves as a, as a showcase of political power struggles including the, the colonization and division of Korea by the Cold War and superpower rivalries, highlighting the interconnectedness of historical events on a global scale. So for this exhibition, we being the influences from handicrafts like this and personal and historical narratives of these images, I'm weaving, you know, the, those three, the elements together. I recontextualize them with the modernist artist approaches and with the, the, the narrative deconstructions by means of image cropping and overlapping and put up to, to contemplate overlooked narratives. While, while projecting possible identities for the marginalized and also, also providing a commentary on redemptive identity. And, and combining artisanal approach, uh, process-based abstraction inspired by craft movement and ex expressionism with uh, with industrial and commercial materials like uh, you know, the chicken wire and copper wire and aluminum wires and also the, the, the pigment print on canvas, I utilize the potential of the material and I push the boundaries of the material to evoke emotion and challenge the, challenge the viewer's perspective. So, at this point, I want to um, start with this installation. In the beginning of the project, I was terrified, like a six-year-old girl, like this sculpture. Actually, this sculpture, the title of this sculpture, the, this girl, is I mean me, six-year-old. Actually, this is, you know, the six-year-old girl's height and the, the face, the anatomy of the face of six years ago. The reason why I'm using this six year old girl is because I want to show my frustration about this whole project. Because the, the navigating the intricacies of the subject and the, this, the, this was so hard because of the weight of the history and also the emotional depth of, of my family ties. The heaviness of subject was intimidating at times because, because I felt that I was 
My life was too shallow, and the life took me softer. And even looking at the, the Korean war photos was hard in the beginning. But over time, these images of refugees became strangely familiar, as if I had seen them my whole life. And now I want to talk about some material and some form. For this installation, I'm using you know, the, the industrial material and commercial material, and I, I use also the metric pad, um, using aged and weathered wire with new strands, strands of wire, and also using moldable, bendable, pliable, but after the build, pretty sorry. Metal wire sculptures as an empty vessel for whatever the content. I wanted to show the, the, the complexity of this subject. You know, so this is a history, but my life is involved, involved around this ice thing. So I'm using that kind of material, and also this is my father's dream. You can see the face. And this one is constructed from deconstructed images. Saw on a metric pad. Symbolizing the urgency of the, the urgency felt by the, the refugees who pack, hastily pack their belongings in whatever they can grab in their household before fleeing Korea. And, and also, this is what I want to say about this cup, the press form. The, this cup was originally was my garden plushie, made of chicken wire a decade ago to protect my tomatoes and lettuce. Now it, it contains the, the images of refugees, including my father, and along with the, some work. So the words is like, you know, I want to be your Superman, and I want to be our Superman. But for her, her inability to embrace all, make the, the, the images burst out of the skull, and then they are scattered on the floor. So this installation represents my attempt to embrace all, yet it also highlights my inability to fully achieve it. Yeah, that's, a, that's the process of making of this installation. And also I want to talk about the, the video. Yeah. I'm not a professional video maker, but the encounter with the opera forced me to make this 23 minute video. In this, in this video, I included the Korean Red Cross interview with my father to find any surviving members in North Korea without any outcomes. And also, I included my personal interview with my father, recorded on my phone, along with the opera and my religious chanting. And I incorporated the uh, Korean world photos overlapped, overlapped with my old family photos. And the placement of this video installation on the floor is intended to evoke a sense of absurdity surrounding refugee experiences, inviting viewers to engage with my artwork physical and emotional standpoint. I'm gonna show some tips here.
I can do a single thread of wire and uh, my stream of consciousness and or physical pathway from my, from my mind. And, and this action of weaving with a thread of wire is converted into a path. And, and on the path, I try to reflect my existence, find the order in chaos. And this path exists somewhere between chaos and order, and emotion and meditation. So it's like my art practice is like mapping a pathway that was hidden and waiting to be discovered and defined conventional understanding, a testament of the complex and open uncharted terrain of the displacement, and using the interior and exterior juxtaposition of wire sculpture, and also a collages of imagery intertwined with metal wire as a metaphor of this location, nostalgia, assimilation, and also desire for belonging. I want, I make my art situated between chaos and order, and emotion and meditation. And this beauty, this artisanal approach, the tiger wearing neck suit, is, is based on my, my walk slowly series, my ongoing walk slowly series. You can, you can see that one, and this sculpture, these Bohemian sculptures, and also it's the, it's the outside in the hallway, the, the hanging sculpture. Is my is one of my walk slowly series. Prior to this walk slowly series, I would create the second and eighth for figurative paintings. But in 2003, I was diagnosed with two, two diseases in my interest, causing infertility, and often unable to walk because of the pelvic pain. So being forced to stop painting. That's when I started this walk slowly series. I literally I had to walk slowly. And the reason why I chose the, the metal wire in my art practice was because my father was a metal smith. So stories of wire were always around me, in my youth, played with. So it was so natural to go to the, you know, the metal wire and just to start the hand weaving. I, in the beginning, I just started the hand weaving in a very slow and meditative manner without any thought of making an art. The metal wire as a material that put myself in the position of uh, labor intensive application was a great mediation to search for a direction to, to contemplate the physical pain that I had to go through at that time. The mindset of simple hand weaving action made me perform the process and rest from the negativity of the physical limitation. I tried to be in the moment, so the, the so, so the process is as important as the final work itself. So I can say that my father's legacy as a medicinist and as a diaspora led me to this space, to this exhibition, where I try to contemplate this, this ephemeral, yet steadily beautiful human existence in this immense expense of time. So he gave me an opportunity to see my life in a different way. So this project has a long way to go with this exhibition as a starting point. For the next step, I plan to dig deeper into my personal beliefs about Christianity in relation to European colonialism. And I hope this exhibition, first of the displaced, will be will be an initial mapping to reveal a personal history as a communal destiny that transcends time and space with aspirations for redemption. So beyond the melancholia, this unreserved longing for places or communities or periods. 
our roots to transcend us. Thank you very much for this team. But during the, the Korean Red Cross interview, my father sent a letter to his brother that might be alive, but no answer for 10 years. So I wanted to show the letter in Korean, and I overlapped with English. Yeah. their views. Yeah. Oh, then this one is you know, this is the title of mother, I believe in mother. This is mother figure. So I want to give them the mother figure, but I I had to upside down of the mother figure. Because you know this whole story is so so I wanted to show that kind of absurdity in my exhibition. How long did it take you to put together each wire? Oh, it, it depends. And you know, the, that centerpiece, it took like, it took like a year. Yeah. You know, the time is one of my main reasons. The song called, actually I said earlier about the core. Core has the connotation of the time inside. So I'm very interested in exploring the, the concept of time. So I'm not a patient person, but I'm meditating with why. So that's why I can do that. Thank you for everything. Well, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Pedro and Nikki and Iris, who's not here anymore, for bringing this to you. Um, Dion, you're here. You're welcome to speak with her, and there's no more snacks out there for you to enjoy. And again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Sarah. 